Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sandalwood Spotlight. This is a podcast where we discuss all things Sandalwood. I'm one of your hosts, Navia. I'm Yano. We want to wish a happy Valentine's Day to all the couples. And <laughs> no, we don't. And a happy single Valentine's <laughs> Day to all the guys and gals out there who are single. Um, hopefully, <laughs> you will be listening to Heartbreak Songs with us. Um, if not, <laughs> I hope you guys step on Lego pieces. <laughs> No, we don't. We don't wish you harm, but we don't wish you well either. No, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's a soul spot. <laughs> and before we get started, we want to give you a little disclaimer. Um, we just want to make a disclaimer <laughs> about our accents. We are not faking our accents. We were nope. both raised overseas. Sadly. Um, <laughs> yes. So although we do talk about kind of our content and um indian content we just want to put a disclaimer out there that these aren't wannabe american accents it's just how we were raised and we nope. do apologize <laughs> yeah and you'll definitely hear me pronounce my name navia when i know it's navia but it's just it's just code switching <laughs> we're just so used to pronouncing stuff a certain way uh we forget to pronounce stuff correctly yep that's true <laughs> <laughs> all right do you want to tell them about the structure of our show um, so this is a Canada podcast, just so we can discuss our passions about the Canada film industry, or also known as the Sandalwood industry. So for our episodes, we've sort of got a structure where we talk about recent news in the industry, upcoming things, um, whatever's been highlighted in the media, and then we like to discuss this uh, episode theme for this episode, which is heartbreak songs on par with Valentine's Day. Um, <laughs> So, and then to finish up the episode, we'll talk about projects that we're looking forward to, movies, music, um, and all that. Yeah, fun stuff. All right. So our first segment is news from Sandalwood, and there's always so many things happening. So the first thing we want to talk about is Upendra recording a song for Karataka Damanaka, which is the new movie starring Shiraj Kumar and Prabhudeva? I believe so. I haven't been to it, but Prabhudeva was definitely featured in a song that's been released. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we get to see more of him in Sandalwood. Yeah, and they just, uh, for that song, they had like a video release party, which is weird, um, but where they performed that song together. So it was kind of cute. It's good to see that they've been highlighting the film in media sort of really early on. So mm -hmm. people will build up that reason to watch. Yeah, I'm definitely excited for that movie. Um, so the next thing is director Prem and his just craziness. He has a movie coming out called KD. And this movie, I had to Google what it was about because I kept hearing conflicting summaries. So it's about 1970s Bangalore and a gangster who is just released from prison and he's kind of just out to set He's just kind of out to, like, correct wrongs that were made in the past. I remember yeah. early last year, they had Shubha Shetty joins the cast of mm -hmm. KD going viral. And all the comments were like, she's too old to be a heroine. <laughs> gotcha. Knowing, wow. knowing Prem will have a strong mother-son trope. And I have a feeling she might play the oh. mother role. I know, I know. Um, but it's great to see, or hopefully see, Shubha Shetty back in the current industry after, yeah. like, 30 years. Um, last yeah. time we saw her with Ravi Chandran, but that's what people are assuming. They haven't really released a lot on that talk since. Yeah. I hope to God she's not playing a mother because I feel like she's only like in her 40s, right? 40s or 50s? She's young. Um, Too young I to play a mother. I think she's 50s. And she's in the 50s? But she can't be like Dua Sarja's mom because she's too no, old. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that's something Pam oh, would God. do. Because oh, Pam loves so to have a strong motherly trope. Yeah. She just, she cannot play the mother. I think I would literally just walk out of the movie if she plays the mom. She's just way too young. She's um, not that young, let's be if well, we're honest. She looks true. young. Yeah. But she was like our parents' time heroine. True. You know? That's true. Uh, Ravi oh. Chandan is also in that movie. She's 48. You see, that's not that old. That's like the same age as, um, she's younger than Sudhi. Yeah. And Sudhi is still a hero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Ravi Chandan is also in the film. Is he? Yeah. So is, um, so, so far we know Sanjay that's in it. Oh, mm -hmm. no, no, no. So there was a news that came out, article of Sanjay Dutt, Shuraj Kumar, and Prem having a meeting at Prem's house. Oh, God. And we don't know if that's for Katie or another project. Oh, God. Um, don't they, isn't Prem's nickname like Build Up Raja or something? That's his nickname, right? Build Up Raja is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know, it could be someone else, but... I've heard people 
call him that before. And I was like, that's okay. so perfect for him. So when you go Google KD, the cast uh-huh. that comes up is Dhruva Sarja, okay. Nishma Nan- Na- Naina? Na- Nanaya. Yeah, I didn't know who she was. Um, Sanjay Dutt, Shilpa Shetty, uh, Jishu Singh Singta. I don't think I said that right. I apologize, but I believe he's a Malayalam actor. Okay. And Ravi Chandra. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's quite a cast. I remember Prem released a film called DK a few years ago, and it might be one of the worst films I've ever seen. Wait, who was that starring? I don't think I saw that movie. Um, No! Well... (laughs) But Prem has definitely had some good releases, like Georgie, the villain. We're not hating on Prem. It's just sometimes. But... The so Katie thing has been going on for so long and they haven't yeah. um, released it. But they have released a trailer for Martin through our searches. Mm-hmm. So I don't know when this Katie is going to finish wrapping up filming. I don't know the progress of it, but we're looking to watch it soon in cinemas. Yeah. Um, and finally, have you checked out Upender's teaser for UI, his new movie? I have. He. I was speaking to my mom about this this morning. Cause uh-huh. This song from, I don't know if you're on Canada Reels on Instagram, but uh-huh. this song from Upendra, the movie Upendra has gone viral. Kari Mali yeah. Manika. Yes, um, yes, it's so viral, my God. Is, yeah, very viral at the moment. And my mom was yeah. talking about it and she's like, you haven't watched the film Upendra because you were too young. Um, okay. And you should watch it. And I was like, yeah. And I was telling her about the whole UI uh-huh. verse going on and she's like Upenda is they would literally back in the day next to his um posters put in brackets Buddhi Vanta Regalki like uh-huh. Upenda's films yeah. Yeah. It's, you need to be an intellect to watch them because his yeah. brain needs to get studied man <laughs> you know crazy you man. know what for one of our episodes since you haven't seen Upendra we need to watch that movie and do a deep dive deep we'll dive, see if we're yeah. smart or not <laughs> Yeah, because I watched OP2, like when it came yeah. out in theaters, and my brain was fried. <laughs> <laughs> He's just such an interesting person here in the industry. For sure. But I was just Googling um, UI, like the film, okay, and it's the same actress as in KD. So now I want to look into her film, because Who was in- I feel like I'm missing something. KD. She works in the Canada movie industry, and her debut was through Prime's film, Egg Love Ya. I knew she was familiar. familiar. Have you watched Ekalabia? Uh, no. So it actually, my mom made me watch it because she said it was really good, but um, it was pretty good. It's like rom-com vibes. It's Rakshita's brother is the actor in it. Okay. And it had, um, what's her name? Rakshita Ram um, as a side lead. But uh-huh. the, this actress, Rishma, that's where she is familiar with. But now she's going to be in KD and UI. And I was just looking at the UI cast, and it looks so interesting. They've got Sonia oh, no. Leone from Bollywood, Nidhi Subaya, who I am so excited to see back on screen. Yeah, yeah. Because she was in a Big Boss um season like a few years back, and I just miss her. <laughs> and they've got Morley Sharma from Dalgu, um, and Indrajit Lankesh, who yeah, yeah, interesting. <laughs> he used to be on Mata Talkies, and he's a director. Oh wow. Um, and at the very end, they don't have a photo, but they have Prashant Sambargi. And if you don't know who that is, he is a controversial. I want to say he's a businessman, but he's also a politician. Uh-huh. He was in a Big Boss season. Um, and he's grown a big fan base through Big Boss. Like, he had, like, that trope oh, where wow. people didn't really like him, and then they ended up liking him. He was a top five contestant. But it's interesting to see him in the film industry. I know he's been in a small roles before, but he's a really influential person. And he's a businessman? Um, it's complicated, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> he's a businessman, he's a producer, he's a social activist, entrepreneur, producer, official uh, uh, activist, entrepreneur, producer. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Now let's get to the meat of the show. We're going to, since Valentine's Day is right around the corner, we want to discuss heartbreak songs because we're two single gals and we're tired of all the lovey-dovey stuff. For the next week, you guys are going to hear about all the romantic songs, but we're we, we're tired of that. So let's talk about these heartbreak songs. Um, the first is Antama from Mr. and Mrs. Ramachari. Uh, tell me, girl, how did you feel when you first heard this song? As a fellow Yesh Stan from his OG <laughs> days. His, Loverboy um, era. Loverboy era, Carmen Abilu serial era. Yeah. Like, I was like three. <laughs> um, it's a 
Antama has to be one of his most impactful heartbreak songs or mm -hmm. in that like 2010s era, like one of the most um, iconic songs. It's one, because Yesh himself sang it. Two, it's just full of emotion. He uses that Mandia slang. Um, mm -hmm. People can really relate to it. And um, so I just remember listening to it the first time and damn, it's yeah. iconic. <laughs> and I feel like that song... I'll, even though Mr. and Mrs. Ramachari has like a million songs, that song is the one that gets memed the most. Like you see him in that blue mm. shirt everywhere. Every It's iconic, you know? Yeah. It's, from that time frame, it's one of the most iconic. And I want to say an uh, honorable mention to Bisilo Kudre from Googly, which I know mm -hmm. has a big fan base. Mm -hmm. That has to be my like second yes heartbreak song. This song was also written by the one and only Yograj Butt. I mean... <laughs> iconic. He's iconic. literally iconic. Yograj Butt's lyrics are just so on point um, yeah. with everything, so... Yeah, for sure. He just conveys um, his emotions so well. And funnily enough, he wrote another song in on our list, uh, Mungara Male from Mungara Male. He was also the lyricist on that song. Yograj Butt, really? Yeah. How did I not know this my whole life? It's one of the most <laughs> iconic songs ever. Yeah. Damn. I know. And it, it's funny because I think we know Yograj, but nowadays for like those sarcastic lyrics, mm -hmm, but Mungar mm -hmm. Malay is not that at all. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. That's different from his like genre. I think we yeah. need a whole episode dedicated to Yograj because he oh, yeah. has some amazing work that we can look into. I, when I found out that he wrote these two songs, I was like, wow, like, what a difference in song. But it also makes sense because Mungara Malay came out in 2006 and Mr. and Mrs. Ramachari came out in 2014. That's about a 10 year different, 10 years difference almost. Yeah, I didn't so, realize that he was that big back in like early 2000s, mm -hmm. um, which is great to discover. Yeah. Um, Mungara Malay, we don't have to really say anything about it. It's an emotion <laughs> no, we don't. for so many Kanadi girls. Yeah, Mungara Male is just an emotion. It's every the tune is iconic. It's nostalgic. The lyrics are on point. Like anyone, anyone, not even film fans, anyone will recognize that tune. It was like it during yeah. its time, and it now what? It's been almost twenty years, close to twenty years, um, and it still has the same effect when you hear it for the first time. Yeah, and all the and, songs in the Mungara Male so movie. And this is another one that gets memed a lot too. It does all the time. The whole yeah. Oh, the whole Dave Dasa sequence. Um, <laughs> him sitting crying, Ganesh by the lake, Pooja Gandhi telling him. And the whole movie is just iconic. I think this was, uh, the music director on this was Mother Murthy as well. And, you know, he's just iconic as well. And he just track goes crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then um, he was also the music director for um, the Raj, or Punit Rajkumar movie Milana. And the song yeah. Uh, Malay, yeah. Literally, Milana is also has to be one of the most iconic films. I know I mm -hmm. said that about the other ones, but Milana <laughs> was just like it really put put it on the map for me yeah. personally. Growing up, me too. I just have this vivid memory of watching Milana for the first time. Every song was a banger. The entire film was a movie. It's so like nostalgic. Just all the tunes from that film, iconic. I fell in love with him on the f during that film. I was like, this is it. This is my man. I didn't know he was he was already married. I was really sad when I figured it out. I was definitely an OG Ganesh girl. Mm -hmm. And my five-year-old me was heartbroken. And then <laughs> Over after Ganesh that, or Puneet? Oh, Ganesh. After uh -huh. Malay. You know, Chalim uh -huh. Chitara was when I was like bawling my eyes out. And yeah. then for Puneet, I was like, damn. damn. Yeah. Puneet, it just, I... we need to have a segment. For, uh, yeah. There's just so much to talk about. Changed so many people's lives. Absolutely. Yeah, um, but Malay Nintu Hoda Mele is just a just an iconic song. Yeah, it's nice. right after the heroine like she finds out that her her, her boyfriend is what well, cheats on her, right? So yeah, Malay Nintu Hoda Mele is when the, it's like sort of from the heroine's perspective, which is rare for heartbreak songs because it's normally from the hero's perspective. But it's when she realizes that the man she was trying so desperately to find took Puneet's help for in the film. Um, doesn't even love her and that was her first heartbreak and then throughout the film you see her, you see her um mm -hmm. transition from being stuck up on him heartbroken over him into yeah. seeing what was in front of her the whole time and she wasn't in love with sort of 
like the character and she starts to develop those feelings so it's got like that transition from like sad to like oh damn like a realization it's interesting what a weird plot now that i'm like now we're ta- ta- uh, talking about it like she's married and she's like husband help me reunite with my boyfriend <laughs> i mean to be fair the minute she got married no yeah. one she, she literally is like i don't want to be in this wedding and he's like yeah. why didn't you tell me earlier and she was like my parents started to kill themselves so she had that like emotional manipulation that struck yeah. situation True. And I'm pretty sure, I can't remember if this is from Mill or not, but in one of the films, like, pretty sure her dad had paid him, the guy, had paid the guy she was in love with to, like, marry someone else. And then she just uh, noticed that. And he literally okay. took the money. And he was like, bye, see you. Yeah. I mean, probably. That's all, that's usually the plot point of every Kanada movie, right? <laughs> well, let's be real. It's a common plot point. <laughs> yeah. But he actually took the money. You know, yeah. He's the bad yeah. guy. Right, 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 right. Um, all, right. all right. Our next song is Yado, Yado Gichi Hoda um, from Sudif's movie Hucha. Yado. Yeah. Yado, Yado Gichi Hoda. Which <laughs> is literally mm-hmm. it, like the Hucha film put Sudif on the map, you know? Yeah. Because yes. Hucha Kicha, like his name in Hucha was Kicha, yeah. and that's what put mm-hmm. Kicha Sudip on the map, um, like to the Canada Sandalwood viewers. So for him, it was a big point in his career, but also that uh, movie and title track was just overall like an emotion for so many people. Yeah. Um, I know people who love that song to this day. It's like crazy. Yeah. And that particular song is also something that gets memed a lot too. Like if you just look at like our yeah. memes, like it's him with the shaved head and like Thank that. Like, and yeah. it's like meme mm-hmm. after she does blah 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 blah. Yeah. And it's just like, yep. <laughs> like you'll just see the scene and you'll know. Yeah. Like you'll know yeah, what you'll they're talking about. Definitely know. You'll know the um, emotion. You know what I was like when I was listening to a whole bunch of heartbreak songs while doing research for this episode. I realized a lot of them, like, blame God for what happened. <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> They're like, God, why did you, like, let this happen to me? Like, why did I deserve this? It's kind of funny. Yeah, they literally do. But it is what it is. Because Rajkumar's song, wait, how do you say it? <laughs> yeah. That same thing, right? They're basically saying, like, God, like, who wrote this? Like, obviously yeah, like referring God, to like God. Yeah, like, God, like, destiny is, like, blah, 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 sort of thing. That's, that song is just, like, if you play that song, immediately mm-hmm. the mood will drop. Like, everyone just knows <laughs> it's a sad song. It's like, an, like, when you're in your feels, you've got to listen yeah. to it. Because the lyrics are just on point on how you feel. And, you know, mm-hmm. all the generations of Canada people will relate to the song. Like, my parents, my grandparents, yeah. me, my kids one day. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. They just know, you know? They know. I don't know how you feel, but I feel like heartbreak songs have become more of a genre in the past, like, 15 years. I don't think they were as big of a genre before. I think Would they you agree? had, like, a sad song when the plot uh-huh. was, like, the plot had happened and it was like that transition mm-hmm. between the plot and the resolution um in the films but i think nowadays it's more common to see a heartbreak song because they will feature a heartbreak in the film just to like get um mm-hmm. like the emoji- the people a bit emotional the audience to feel oh no yeah, they're like not that's... gonna end up together <laughs> usually it's like the climax it is just yeah the plot yeah. climax happens and then they'll have a filler song um mm-hmm. but yeah some of them are just super memorable and you reside yeah. with a lot of people and usually Yo Garage Bud is writing them. <laughs> yeah. So it's crazy how Yo Garage Bud's lyrics can go from like sad in your feels to like yeah. laughing your head off, partner style, li- like rap yeah. partner style. Crazy. I think his most recent work is very like sarcastic. Yeah, like more on the comedy yeah. notes. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. um, he writes for like a lot of Shannon movies, which are like comedy yes. comedy based. Um, there was another one I was listening to the other day. I was like, damn. What was that? But yeah, yeah, I like his comedy flop. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other sad songs you want to bring up? Um, not really. I'm like trying to think. Songs. I don't. Yeah. I think just some like tunes of some films are sad in general. Like the music, mm-hmm. you just know and you like connect it with the sad song. Yeah. So. All right. Cool. Well, let's talk about what we're looking forward to. Um. Yes. A couple months ago, I think, released the news that he was working on his next movie, Toxic. 
And I mm -hmm. think we are both excited because the summary that we've gone so far is very exciting. And unlike any other kind of movie we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. um, this new film is going to be interesting to see the direction it takes, first of all, because he's had such a big break from cinema. Um, and second of all, because, yeah, Game How long has 2 it been? came out 2022. And he's not oh, releasing no way. until... Yeah. And he's not releasing until 2025. That's at least a three-year gap. Yeah, for sure. Oh, he's wow. He's been busy that's with crazy. the family, guys. He's been, like, on holidays. He's been helping people. I know he does a lot that's of charity true. work. Um, he's been, oh, you know, hanging out with the wife. They were shot in London the other day. Yeah. They're everywhere, you know? I oh, and this is them. directed by a woman? Geetu Mohandas? Yeah, it is. Oh, wow. That's but, exciting. Yeah, so Toxic is an interesting title because we have mm -hmm. seen some alpha male films in the past year come out. Um, yeah. And I just really hope Yesh doesn't follow that, like, format of, like, a alpha male sort and it's more so, like, a suspense thriller type. Um, it'd be interesting to see him in, like, a non-super mass role but more of, like, a um, character-based role. You know what I mean? Well, didn't they, in the teaser, didn't they say it was like a new kind of fairy tale or something weird like that? I thought, yeah, like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's like a fairy tale for grown-ups. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. He might play, like, a role like a Joker or something. That'd be cool to see, like, an insane role. Yeah. You know? It does um, say online that this is a thriller, so... Yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. But knowing yeah, she probably won't go through with the alpha male, you know, role. I hope not, because I don't want him um, boxed into a certain type of character. I think that'll do a disservice to him as an actor. Yeah, especially because he's just got such a big base based on KGF, which is such a macho, mm -hmm. manly role. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see him in new roles. Um, yeah. But I feel like the fan base of all these big actors, like they like to see him in certain roles. And if they don't see him in those certain roles, they get kind of upset and throw tantrums. I mean, that's their fault. As a stand, yeah. you should support them no matter what role they do. Because as actors, I assume they'd have like a life goal of doing different roles, right? Like you don't want yeah. to be boxed in the same frame. Because we see how that's happened. Like I remember Punitash Kumar, he had um, Dordmane Urga or Anjali mm -hmm. Fudra come up. And around that time, all of his films were like a similar like frame. It yeah. was like he's from a rich family, like a Dordmane, um, yeah. that sort of trope. And then you mm -hmm. see like Darling Krishna doing the same love triangle trope. And then yeah. like, fans are then going to complain, oh, it's tiring. We want something new. We want something fresh. So I yeah. think it's good to see Yesh in something new, something fresh. Um, and I if his fans so. have an issue with that, then they're not real friends. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, all right. The next thing you're looking forward to is watching Bachelor Party because I've seen it and I really enjoyed the film, but you haven't had the opportunity yet. Yes. I know Bachelor Party came out in like almost Ooh, a yes, month ago now. <laughs> yeah. um, I looked at the teaser. I was so excited. Like I've mm -hmm. really wanted to have a film similar to Kirk Party come out. I mm -hmm. at first assumed it was a sequel, but mm -hmm. it's like obviously a similar team but obviously different cast members yogi and digan and achut kumar who i'm really keen to see on the screen together mm -hmm. they're dynamic um but i was really bummed when i found out they wasn't coming to brisbane where i'm from in australia uh which is a struggle as nris especially when it comes to kind of films i just yeah. feel like we don't get a lot in theaters here um yep. the other communities <laughs> don't really have that issue however with the kind of cinemas it's always a hit or miss like we had yeah. KGF, like we've had some big name titles come in, um, even mm -hmm. some of the Sabarada and a few titles. Um, but when it comes to Canada Cinema, Cartier yeah. did come, it's like really hard. And I was really disappointed when Bachelor Party wasn't coming. So I have to wait for the OTT release yeah. for that one. But I but know Dubby has watched it. But even on OTT, we don't get a full range of Kannada movies. Like, it's very hard to find it's legal true. ways of watching Kannada movies. Illegally, we, we don't can find get, them all. We don't get Voot, first of no. all. We get Z5, but it is very expensive. It's not, you can't use the Indian Z5 plans here. Um, Sunnext is the only decent one, but Sunnext more so has more, like, older mm -hmm. films. Prime, we get movies, but some movies are geo-restricted to India. Yep. Then we have to use a VPN, and there's a whole 
yeah, it's a bit of a struggle when it comes to yeah, that. which is. A VPN is always a struggle because it's 50-50 whether it'll work or not. It'll work or uh, not. That's correct. Yeah. Um, I, you were the one that told me, you're like, girl, use a VPN. Because I posted about watching a movie on Instagram and an actor reached out to me. He's like, how are you watching it? And I had to embarrassingly tell him that it was illegal. And you're like, girl, <laughs> just use a VPN. And I tried a couple times and it just did not work for me. So. Like, the one I use, um, mm-hmm. not name dropping because we're not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsor us, guys. Mm-hmm. Yes, sponsor us, please. But the one I use, I use to watch uh, for B- Big Boss. And uh-huh. it would work with the boot. And then the boot I would see. like sort of uh, catch. I don't think it's called boot anymore. I think they got a company um, bought by Geo Cinema now. Okay. Um, but I think either one, Geo Cinema or whatnot, they would like, it would start working for a few days. And then the VPN would have to fix it. And then it would start working again, sort of thing. And Netflix okay. and Prime are just harder to use get on. Yeah. So, yeah. We want and to see no more con- kind of films on Netflix yeah. um, and Prime. I mean, they're on Prime, but it's just not all of them play for us here. And we have, like, two on Netflix. Like, it's really bad. Netflix has, like, almost zero kind of movies. It's mostly, like, Telugu Tamil films dubbed in yeah. kind of yeah, which, I mean, I'm sure they're great, but it's just not my cup of tea. I, I don't really like to watch them. Like, I do watch a lot of Pan India films. I'll watch a lot of huh. um, Tamil, Telugu sometimes, just to, like, you know, I do have a lot of friends who are from those communities, and they'll, like, be like, okay, watch this, watch that. I'll watch it. But, mm-hmm. you know, as a Kannada girl, and I want to recommend a Kannada film to someone else, it's a little tricky because it's, like, yeah. myself, I struggle to find online to watch you know yeah and we've heard um from filmmakers that there's just not an audience for kind of films and i like so i can understand their pain as well um, yeah, that's true but as nris we're asking please give us a legal way of watching your films because we will like even if it's like paying like amazon like if you want to buy a film on amazon right now or rent it, it's like 2.99 like, I'll pay that. If I get to watch a really clear movie that, like, you know, recently come out in India, I will totally pay it. So if that's an option, please do it. That's true. Um, Like, it's not like we want it for free. We, yeah. It's just we don't have access to it. And I know they put a lot of geo like, locks on them. Yes. Um, geo restrictions. But I'm not really sure why. Like, I'm yeah. sure there's a reason. Um. But yeah, I would love to watch some more Kanada films. But yeah, if you're gonna get any subscription, Sunnex has to be the most affordable and has the okay. most range of South films. Um, so good to know. Cool. I watched the new Chirusaja movie on there, um, which is shocking because he passed away like five, four years ago. Yeah, it's um, been a while. So they recently um released it in theaters. Recently, I mean a few months ago, and then we got it on OTT. But yeah. It's, it does have yeah. kind of films on there. Um, and but, yeah. finally, I just saw on Instagram, and I really want to bring this up. Apparently, they finished wrapping Yuva, which is a Yuva movie. Um, how do you pronounce it? Is it Yuva? How do you pronounce his name? Yuva, Yuva, I, which Yuva. Uh, stars Yuva Rajkumar. Yeah, they Vinay just Rajkumar's, wrapped their production. Son, not Vinay Rajkumar's son, sorry. <laughs> Vinay Rajkumar's younger brother, Raghavan yeah. Rajkumar. Yeah. So they just wrapped up filming for uh, that film. Which I'm so excited because I'm sure then it's going to get released in the next two or three months. Um, so that's exciting news, at least for me. <laughs> um, let me quickly look up the cast on that one. Yeah. Because I believe something we got her is in it, which is cool. want to okay. see her in something. So she was big in Kantara, right? But a yeah. lot of people don't know that she was actually in Popcorn Monkey Kaigo starring Ben and... Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that either. But a lot of people think Kantara is her um, debut film. Hmm. Um, it's a, it's a Hombali Films production, which gives yeah. you a lot of hope, action, yeah. romance. Saptimi Gora, Achit Kumar, which I'll be good to see. Um, okay. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be great. Good to see some more people, newer actors, younger actors in the mm-hmm. Yeah. Agreed. I hope it releases near me. <laughs> oh, God. I know. It's like, it's, it's, it's a crapshoot. Like, it's 50 50. You never know. They got Prakash, um, Right as well, Prakash Rai slash Raj. Okay, uh huh. So this sounds like a good cast. Yeah, pretty like solid cast. It says it was supposed to be released twenty second of December twenty twenty three, but was postponed to the twenty eighth of March twenty twenty four. Oh, that's interesting. Well, Indian movies never get released on time. So <laughs> wait, is the twenty? They're always of getting March, pushed back. Uh, March. I'm pretty sure twenty eighth of March is Punit Rajkumar's birthday. 
I could be very Oh, you wrong. think they let did me, it on purpose? Let me... And then it's in March. When it goes to my birthday, it ends up to my birthday. It's in March, April time. Uh, Punit is March 17th. Ah, uh, okay. Because the only person's birthday I remember is Yesh's. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no. Must have just been they picked a random date. Um, and Raj Kumar is April 24th. I think you're just, like, combining them. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Is there anything else that you're looking forward to? Um, no. I'm just excited just for some... I think, like... I think 2022 was a solid year for Kanae Cinema. Mm-hmm. Last year was okay, but this year hopefully they can pull it together, bring out some more hits. <laughs> Agree. Pan India hits, local hits, fresh content. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's the end of our podcast. We want to thank you all so much for joining. Uh, we're still working on getting our social medias up, but once they're all up, you can follow us. I mean, hopefully all our, our usernames are at Sandra with Spotlight everywhere. <laughs> are we still working on getting those? Yes, um, the Insta okay. is under progress, but okay. it should be linked shortly. Yeah, sure. Once those are up, we'll link um, everything. And uh, thank you guys so much for joining. Bye. Yeah, have a lovely day. Bye.